All right, in this video, we're gonna go over a proof of the vertical angles theorem. So what the vertical angles theorem tells us is that when we have two intersecting lines like we do here, angles that are formed across from each other or opposite each other are congruent. So in this case, that would mean that angle A is congruent to angle C, and by the same token, angle B is congruent to angle D. So this is what the vertical angles theorem tells us, right? We have two straight lines here and they intersect. And when we form, uh, when we have two intersecting lines like that, we're gonna form four angles and the opposite angles are congruent to each other, all right? So angle B and angle D congruent, angle A and C congruent. This is what the vertical angles theorem tells us. So whenever you see intersecting lines like this, you wanna be able to think of the vertical angles theorem. It's gonna be useful when we go to do proofs and things like that. So how do we prove the vertical angles theorem? Well, the key lies in the straight lines that we're using uh, to form the angles. All right, so if we look at angle A and angle D, they add up, if we look at them, to make this straight line here, right? If we take angle A, here and angle D here, and we add them up, they would give us this straight red line here. I mean, straight is <laughs> relative because my drawing is very imperfect, but right, we can say that angle A and angle D would add up to a straight line. So what we know about straight lines is that they add up to 180 degrees, right? So this whole red line here, if we measured the angle measure from uh, this section of the line here to this section of the line here, all the way around, we'd get 180 degrees because that's how many degrees are in a straight line. We can think of that, there are 360 degrees in a circle. If we went all the way around back to A here, right, then we would, ha we would have gone 360 degrees. So a straight line makes half of that or 180. All right, so if we say that angle A plus angle D equals 180 degrees, that's gonna be the first step in our proof. And we know that this is true because a straight line makes 180 degrees. The second step for our proof is going to be to use the other line, right? So if we make a straight line here between C and D, then we could say that angle C and angle D are also going to add up to be 180 degrees, right? Because again, they together make this blue straight line here. So we could say, again, that angle C plus angle D equals 180 degrees. All right, so this is the second major step of the proof. And if we look at this, you can hopefully kind of see where we're going with this. If we look at angle, uh, the two uh, statements that we've written here, they both have angle D in common. They both have 180 degrees in common. All right? So the way that we've set this proof up, up is we're going to prove that angle C and angle A are congruent to each other because they are vertical angles. So we're gonna, we're gonna prove that based on the steps that we've written here. So how could we do that? Well, if we wanna prove that angle A and angle C is this, are the same, are congruent, are equivalent, the first thing we want to do is get them in terms of, uh, get them isolated. So write both of these statements in terms of angle A and angle C respectively. So if we rearrange these equations, right, we can subtract angle D from both sides on both of these equations, right, which would then give us angle A equals 180 minus angle D. Now we could do the same thing with our second equation. We could say angle C equals 180 minus angle D. So all we've done here is subtract angle D from both sides of both of these statements or equations. And now we have angle A and angle C in their own terms. In other words, we have just angle A on this side of the equation and just angle C on this side of the equation. And we can see that they equal the same thing. So from here, all we have to use is the transitive property. If we know that angle A equals 180 degrees minus angle D and angle C also equals 180 degrees minus angle D, they both equal the same thing, therefore they must equal each other. So we could say angle A equals 
angle C for their angle measures. And then because if their angle measures are, are the same, we can say they're congruent. We could then make a little congruent symbol here and say that angle A is congruent to angle C, which we know based on the vertical angles theorem, right? Because angle A here and angle C are vertical angles the way that they've been drawn. So we know that based on the vertical angles theorem, this is true. And all we've done here is prove that to be the case, again, based on two major concepts here. The concept of a straight line being 180 degrees, and that's where we got these two steps here. And also the transitive property, right? So we did a little algebraic rearrangement here, and now we have angle A and angle C in their own terms, and we found that they equaled the same uh, set of terms here, 180 minus angle D for both cases. And then by the transitive property, we could say that angle A and C are equivalent as well. And if they have the same angle measure, they must be congruent. All right, so this is kind of a, a brief informal proof of the vertical angles theorem, uh, but it is a, a theorem that you're going to need to know when we go to do parallel line proofs, uh, parallelogram proofs, triangle proofs, any of that. All right, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.